You'll have seen the pictures from Brazil. Thousands of protesters stormed Congress, the Supreme Court and the Presidential Palace. It left us asking, where did that come from? To answer that, we need to start with two men. In October, Luis Inácio Lula da Silva was elected president. Lula had narrowly beaten Brazil's far-right president, Jair Bolsonaro. And before the election, Bolsonaro repeatedly said of the electronic voting machines, the system is completely vulnerable. And after he'd lost, he and some of his supporters questioned the result. The current popular movements are the result of indignation and a feeling of injustice on how the electoral process took place. There's no evidence of fraud, but disinformation about this election has persisted. These conspiracy narratives, the idea that the election was somehow rigged, that Bolsonaro was, was the true winner and that it wasn't actually Lula, um, those are narratives that have been spread online for several months, um, predating the election itself and, and actually quite a while before that. And in November, these ideas were tested in court. A challenge by Bolsonaro's party was rejected by Brazil's electoral authorities. But some of his supporters continued to protest. They called for the military to intervene. And they turned to violence. When Lula's win was certified by electoral courts, they torched buses in Brasilia and tried to storm the federal police headquarters. Uh, on Christmas Eve, police unveiled a bomb plot near the Brasilia airport. As for Bolsonaro, in late December, he left Brazil and headed to Florida. We've seen him there. It's thought he's based in Orlando. And after this weekend's riots, he tweeted that the invasion of government buildings crossed the line. Lula, though, accuses him of encouraging this. And the sense of grievance held by both camps runs deep. Lula was president from 2003 to 2010. He was Brazil's first working class president. He pursued policies that lifted millions out of poverty. And in 2009, the then US president Barack Obama called him the most popular politician on earth. But Lula would go from that to prison. In 2017, he was convicted of corruption and banned from standing for president. His lawyers said he'd been subject to a politically motivated investigation. This is disputed, though the judge behind the conviction would later become a minister under Bolsonaro. Lula would serve 580 days in prison until his conviction was annulled. He was released. He could once again stand for election, something that still infuriates his opponents. Most of these uh, more radical Bolsonaro supporters, they believe that Lula is a communist and he will install a communist dictatorship. But Bolsonaro is some way from power. On New Year's Eve in Florida, this photo emerged of him eating a KFC. On New Year's Day in Brasilia, Lula was sworn in. A week after that, we saw this, the storming of Congress. Tensions, years in the making, had burst into full view, just as they did in different ways at the US Capitol two years ago. I think in many ways, oddly enough, the United States and now Brazil are somewhat bellwethers of the very modern challenges democracy faces globally. And the message from the Brazilian rioters is a familiar one. We want new elections, clean ballot boxes. We don't believe that this election was democratic. There are several indications that there was fraud, that there was corruption. And so, while this is a story specific to Brazil, there's a broader truth here, that if politicians repeatedly tell their supporters that the electoral system is broken, in the end, some are going to believe them and act on it.